in my AWS account. To create a static access key and a secret key, you first need to create an IAM user. To do that, you can go to the IAM section of the AWS console. You can search IAM and under services, select IAM. You need to go to user section and then add a user. Give a name for the user. Let's call it div user. Because we are going to use only access key and secret key, you don't need to give console access. We will use this user to access AWS programmatically. So click next. If you want, you can attach policies here or you can change the policies later. So let's click next. The user is created. I want to grant this user some permissions. To do that, select the user. And under permissions, let's grant some permission for the users. In this case, I want to grant him S3 uh, full access. So let's attach a policy directly and then search S3. And I want to grant Amazon S3 full access. You can of course customize these policies. To know more about IAM policies, users, groups, feel free to watch the video given in the description. Add permissions. Now you need to create access key and secret key. To do that, go to security credentials. And then here you have a section called access keys. So let's create an access key. In this case, uh, the easiest way to select is to use this other. It will give you uh, some information about how to use these access keys. Click next. Let's call it my developer keys. So it's now going to show you an access key and a secret key. The secret key will be shown only once. So remember that you save this one in a safe place. You now know how to create static access keys and secret keys. Let's learn how to use them in a real AWS environment. I'm in my development machine. The question now is how you can use this access key and secret key. You can use them in AWS SDKs like AWS SDK for .NET, Java, or alternatively, you can use them in AWS tools for PowerShell or command line interface. So imagine I have a couple of buckets like this. I have three buckets in my account and I want to list them. If I go into my development machine and then type AWS S3 LS to list the buckets, I get a message saying that uh, I don't have access. So one way to give credentials uh, to access AWS is to type AWS configure and then it will pop a message asking for access key and secret key. So I can give the access key and secret key I created a moment ago and the default region to operate for these commands. And now my access key and secret key is globally set. So if I type AWS S3 LS, it will now use the default profile and list the buckets I have in my account. Now this is good, but where does this credentials get saved? It gets saved under default profile. So if you are in a Windows machine, I'm connected as an administrator. So under that you will have a .aws and this is the file that it saves this information. Now, if you type AWS configure again, you'll find that these credentials are saved. So you can repeatedly use them even in the future. Now, for some reason, uh, if you delete this file, if you delete these uh, credential files, and now if you type AWS configure, you will find that it will now going to prompt you again for those credentials. You can also save these credentials as a profile. So you can say AWS configure dash dash profile, give it a name. So let's call it due. And now if you provide these credentials, it's going to save them under a profile. 
so all looks good and now if i call aws s3 ls it's still going to give access denied error but you can provide three profile name and now it's going to show the buckets again hope you enjoy these kind of videos remember to subscribe to the channel and thumbs up wish you a fantastic cloud journey see you next time